On December 15, 1997, Luzeda Cuevas and Pedro Vera's Philadelphia home caught fire. Although the couple's two older children were rescued that day, their 10-day-old baby girl, Delimar Cuevas Vera, wasn't so lucky. Could the fire that engulfed their home be part of a sinister plot? Or was it an accident? Hi, and welcome to M7 Crime Storytime, where we cover solved, unsolved, and twisted cases. Today, we're looking at a case with an insane twist, a story that will demonstrate that a mother's instincts are stronger than any other power in the universe. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to keep up to date with our most recent true crime content. Without further ado, let's dive into the story. Luzeta Cuevas, who went by Luz, was born in 1971. She is of Hispanic descent and moved to the USA when she was young. Though we don't know the actual year she arrived, we do know that she struggled to adjust and learn the language. Luz started working at a young age. After meeting Pedro Vera, she quickly fell in love. It didn't take long for the pair to get married and have kids. When Luz was in her early 20s, the couple welcomed their first child, a boy. Luz had another son a few years later. However, having a daughter was something that she always wanted. She became pregnant once more at the age of 26, and this time she was carrying a girl. She was ecstatic. In 1997, on December 5th, her baby was due for delivery. Everything went smoothly after the delivery, and a few weeks later, Luz and her newborn daughter were back at their Feltonville home in North Philadelphia. Luz had already thought of the name she would give her newborn girl, Delimar Cuevas Vera. She was now the proud mother of a little girl. Even though Delimar was Luz's third child, she was her first daughter, and it was an extremely happy time in the household. It was also almost time for Christmas, so the family took this opportunity to host a small party at their Philadelphia home. Ten days later, on December 15, 1997, Luz and her family held a gathering where she invited close friends and family members. As the evening of December 15, 1997 passed, everything seemed normal. Luz managed to get baby Delimar down to sleep and had placed her in her crib in the front upstairs bedroom of the family's two-story row house. She then went downstairs to take care of a few household chores. Carolyn Correa, Pedro's distant cousin, was still around because the brakes on her car were broken, so Pedro decided to fix the car's broken brakes for her. The task took longer than usual, so Carolyn went back inside the house. Carolyn found Luz and the two started chit-chatting. Luz had some chores to finish, but she still engaged in the conversation since they only occasionally met and had a lot to catch up on. As the conversation progressed, Luz came to know about Carolyn's recently born child. Luz was very excited about this news. She further wanted to continue this conversation, but it was interrupted with a loud noise that seemed to have come from the second floor of the house at about 7 p.m. Thick smoke started to spread around the house. As the smoke reached down the stairs to where Luz and Carolyn were, it quickly became clear that the house was on fire. Luz then managed to get her two sons out of the house, while Carolyn ran out to call Pedro for help. Immediately, Luz's attention turned to her baby, who was still in the upstairs bedroom. Luz quickly ran up the stairs and into the upstairs hallway, where she was met with a dense cloud of smoke. To her horror, she realized that the smoke was coming from Delamar's room, which was now almost completely engulfed in flames. Luz managed to make it as far through the flames as she could, but she soon had to turn back as the smoke overwhelmed her. With no one to help her, she ran to the middle of the street and started screaming for help. Soon, nearby residents came to her aid. When she told them that her baby was still inside, one of the neighbor's sons hurried to the house, but the smoke and flames were too much for him to handle, so he turned away. Luckily, the fire response was quick, and the fire was put out in under 15 minutes. However, the second floor of Luz and Pedro's home sustained significant damage, with Delimar's room being completely destroyed. When the firefighters went into baby Delimar's room, they couldn't find her. The firefighters then broke the news to Luz and Pedro that the 10-day-old baby Delimar was nowhere to be found. As you might guess, when Luz heard this news, 
She completely broke down and started telling the firefighters that this wasn't possible. Luce was certain that she couldn't find Delamar in her crib when she went upstairs. She was in complete shock. She'd burned her face and breathed smoke, and the firefighters could see that. They thought that because of the trauma and the injuries, she was just unable to process what had just happened. The horrific incident left Luz and her family in shock. An investigation into the matter was quickly conducted. During the investigation, they recovered debris particles in the burned-out room that resembled human ashes. But what had instigated the fire that cost a child's life? The fire was simply a tragic accident. It appeared that the blaze had started because of a dangerously home-rigged extension cord that had been connected to a space heater. After the investigation was done, the case of the death of 10-day-old Delimar Cuevas Vera was closed. However, the story did not end here. It was evident that Luz and her family went through a great deal of pain. Losing their only daughter just days before Christmas felt like a curse to the family. And although the rest of the family accepted the conclusion of the case, Luz remained convinced that Delamar was still alive, as no real evidence of her tiny body was ever discovered. The family never held a funeral for baby Delamar. They also never claimed a death certificate because they were afraid to obtain one from the courts because a body was never found. As the years went by, Luz consistently declared that her baby was still alive. Eventually, the matter got so heated that it drove a wedge between her and her family. Soon, her husband Pedro filed for divorce. It almost seemed like Luz was becoming insane. But why was Luz so determined that her daughter was still alive? Did she have evidence for her claims? In another interview, Liz stated that on the day her house caught fire, she did go into her baby's room, but the crib was empty. In addition to this, she saw that the bedroom window was open. She wanted answers to her questions. She wanted to know why her baby's crib was empty when she ran through the smoke to get her child out. Why was the bedroom window open when it was a freezing cold night outside? And lastly... Why were there no remains at all? With all these questions in mind, she wanted to have the matter investigated by the police. But owing to the fact that the whole legal procedure would be above her earnings, she did not go ahead with it. But even then, Liz remained determined that one day she'd be able to reunite with her daughter. On January 24, 2004, Liz was invited to a family birthday party in Philadelphia. This birthday celebration was attended by a number of extended family members. Liz was familiarizing herself with the crowd when the unexpected happened. At the party, she noticed a young girl who was about six years old. The longer she stared at the little girl, the faster she came to the realization that this child looked identical to her daughter, Delamar. It had been six years since the fateful night that led to her daughter's demise. However, coincidentally, the girl she noticed was about the same size and age as her daughter. However, this wasn't the most intriguing part. The young girl's uncanny resemblance to Luz was so intriguing that Luz wanted to know who she was. Also, when the girl smiled, she noticed a dimple on one of her cheeks that looked exactly like one of her son's. Luz then went around asking who the child was. One of the attendees said that her name was Aliyah Hernandez, Carolyn's daughter. At that moment, everything turned blank. This was it. Could it be that the daughter, whom everyone thought died in the fire on December 15, 1997, was alive this whole time? It couldn't be. She was certain that Aaliyah was her daughter Delamar after recalling the events of that fateful night. Additionally, to seal the proof, Carolyn was in fact there the night her house burned down. Despite being convinced that the girl at the party was Delamar, Liz knew that she had to get evidence, or no one would believe her. According to media reports at the time, she picked up the trick from cop shows. Knowing that to prove this feeling in her gut, she would have to get a DNA sample. This was when she decided to take a big risk. Liz called the girl over to her and told her that she had gum stuck in her hair. Under the guise of removing the gum, Liz managed to yank a few of Aaliyah's hairs before stuffing them into a napkin. She then tucked the napkin into a Ziploc bag and soon after left the party. Although Luz now had what she believed was conclusive evidence that she'd been right about her daughter all along, 
She knew that the hairs were useless unless she could convince someone to test them. Liz then showed up at the police station with this bag of hair, but the police didn't really take what she was saying seriously. And since they didn't really believe her, they certainly didn't run any DNA tests. The case of their house fire was long since closed, and it was assumed that Delimar was deceased. There was no reason to run a DNA test against this girl's hair. But why? They could have just run a test to be sure, right? Well, when the police asked Carolyn to produce a birth certificate for her daughter Aaliyah, she did. It even had a birth date, which stated that the girl was born on January 6, 1998, in a home birth. So, despite Luz's claims that the girl was hers, the police didn't want to take the investigation further. No matter how hard Liz pushed the police to do the testing because she knew that it was her baby, they wouldn't pursue it any further. Determined to prove her case, she turned to a local politician, Pennsylvania State Representative All Hail Cruz, for help, hoping that he would hear her out. During an hour and a half long appointment at Cruz's office, Liz pleaded her case, telling him about her six year long journey to find her daughter and her theory that Delamar had been kidnapped. Angel Cruz found it hard to take the information in. He was skeptical, but something inside made him think that this bizarre tale could have some foundation in truth. He found Liz credible and believed her. He passed the information he'd been given along with the hair evidence to the district attorney's office, which opened an investigation. Two weeks into the investigation, the DNA test results arrived, and it turned out that Liz was right the whole time. The DNA tests proved that the girl she had seen at the party, Aaliyah, was in fact Liz's presumed deceased daughter, Delimar, who was now six years old. And just as she had always suspected, the baby, who was supposed to have died in the fire aged just ten days, had been alive all this time. Cruz then called the police and Carolyn was given a DNA test that showed that Aaliyah Hernandez was indeed Delimar. When Correa arrived, Aaliyah was taken away from her. It had already been proved that Aaliyah was actually baby Delamar all along, but the question was raised, why did Carolyn do such a thing? And if she kidnapped baby Delamar, how could she have managed to pull off such a stunt? What was her story? Carolyn Correa had a history of difficult pregnancies and losing children. Despite these miscarriages, Carolyn had three children. Her first two children were healthy sons, and her youngest was a daughter. But despite having three children already, she kidnapped Delamar when she was just 10 days old. If she had wanted a baby girl all along, why would she kidnap Delamar in the first place? According to the records, Carolyn did actually give birth to a baby in her home just three days before the fire took place at Liz's home in Philadelphia. However, we don't know what really happened to that baby. At that time, Carolyn was with her boyfriend, and according to him, he believed that she was pregnant with a girl and that he was the father of the child. A close friend of Carolyn also confirmed that she assisted Carolyn with her home birth. Either way, when Carolyn heard the news that she was not Aaliyah's biological mother, she was shocked. Additionally, she also refused to believe that Aaliyah was actually Delamar, who was Luz and Pedro's daughter. The investigation into the matter quickly resumed and it turned out that Carolyn had used her car troubles on the night of December 15, 1997, as a ruse to make her way into Luz and Pedro's house after the party had dispersed. Once she entered, she waited until Luz was distracted before she finally went up and stole the newborn from her crib and started the fire to cover her tracks. Carolyn then took the baby girl across state lines to her home in Willingboro, New Jersey, where she claimed just days later that she'd given birth to the girl inside her house. She then renamed the girl Aaliyah Hernandez, and for the next six years, she raised the child as her own. Carolyn sent Aaliyah to a private school and enrolled her in a beauty pageant training until she met Luz on January 24, 2004. As investigators further looked into Carolyn's background, they found something completely shocking. This incident was not the first time that she'd been in trouble with the law. In fact, a year after the kidnapping, She'd been convicted in connection with a 1996 theft and fraud case after it was discovered that she'd been stealing business checks from the medical office she worked for. Interestingly, in that case, she had also used arson to try to cover her tracks, setting fire to the medical office to hide evidence. Thankfully, no one was hurt, 
but Carolyn received a five-year probation for the crime. Carolyn was charged with kidnapping, arson, assault, concealing the whereabouts of a child, and interfering with the custody of a child. She was taken into custody on $1 million bail. However, there were many questions that remained unanswered. These questions were, how could she have made her friends and relatives believe her story for so many years? And since she was Pedro's cousin, didn't the father recognize his own child? Though we don't really know for sure, there was one thing that was certain. Carolyn couldn't have pulled off the kidnapping alone. She might have had an accomplice. The case soon went to trial, but things got really messy. Carolyn accused Delamar's father, Pedro, of being in on the whole kidnapping plan. There were even rumors and allegations that Pedro was actually having a romantic relationship with his cousin Carolyn, and the plan was for the three of them to be a family. Though all of this was just speculation and none of it was proven, the judge confirmed that there was a high chance that a second person was involved, but no evidence was found. Later, her lawyer ruled the case as insanity to her defense, but despite this, Carolyn was sentenced to 9 to 30 years in prison in 2005, with the eligibility for parole in 2014. It's been very, I was real happy because now I'm with my real mom and I have a good life and nice brothers. What were your thoughts on this crazy case? Do you believe that no force is more powerful than a mother's intuition? Please share your opinions about this in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel for more true crime content and press the bell icon to get notified of every new video we post. Thanks for watching.